All right, everyone, Celtic are back in action tomorrow. It's our first midweek match in a wee while. In fact, a wee quiz question to begin today's video. Who was our last midweek fixture against? I'll reveal the answer after the intro. Hearts is the correct answer. A 3-1 win at Celtic Park. Well done if you got that. Give yourself a pat on the back. Make yourself feel good about that. Right, today we have the usual bit of a roundup with the difference that we do have a game to talk about. We'll do that at the end. Um, it is the final game of the season that isn't taking place in Glasgow. It's also the last one where a trophy won't be handed out at the end of it. So um, it may be viewed as the the least attractive of the three matches we've got left this season. But I think it's still going to be interesting tomorrow. Anyway, news. As I say, another news roundup. And we start with the news that Kyogo has been named as the SPFL's Premiership Player of the Season. I am not really sure what weight this award actually holds. I certainly get the impression it's nowhere near as prestigious as like the PFA Premiership Player of the Year, which Kyogo has won. Uh, even like Celtics Awards, which Kyogo won, what the top goal scorer, Players Player of the Year, and the the kind of fans voting Player of the Year as well. Uh, Football Writers is coming up, I think, on Sunday as well, so a fair chance he wins that. So he's, he's kind of building a, a real collection of awards here, but he has been named as the SPFL's Premiership Player of the Year. We also have Ange as the SPFL's Premiership Manager of the season. Sorry, season, not year for Kyogo. They have to differentiate it, I guess. Um, but well done to those two. Can't really argue with either of them. Another SPFL news that is sure to matter to you even less than that Kyogo and Ange news. The uh, match ball is uh, changing for next season. I promise this isn't like a slow news day. I just did find this relatively interesting. Um, this affects the SPFL and the SWPL. They are going to be using a Puma ball from next season. And it's interesting because it spells the end of the Mitre deal, which has run for nearly three decades. It first started in 1998, which I think was the year when the, the old SPL first came in. And it's going to be Puma from next season and their Orbiter Ball, which uh, I quote, is crafted with 12 symmetrical panels and contours between panels fine-tuned to form deeper channels. The Orbiter promises excellent aerodynamic performance on the pitch. And that is genuinely in the SPFL statement. Uh, knowing the track record that Scottish football has with anything that is like relatively new, see VAR as a perfect example. I fully expect this ball like not to bounce or something like that and us to get some sort of drama at the start of next season. But it is Puma that we're looking at, so mitre away, Puma in. Uh, moving on, the North Curve have released um, information and actually instructions for this weekend's full stadium display at Celtic Park. I feel like we've spoken about this a fair bit, so I'll just move on to the statement and read it. It reads, as we stand on the brink of another historic treble, we urge our current heroes to take inspiration from the giants of the past to write their own names into Celtic folklore. For Saturday, we have prepared a full stadium TIFO to welcome the champions to the park and inspire them to make history. It is up to us, to everyone at Celtic Park, to build up our own legends. To help do this, we ask that all fans make every effort to be at your seat early, be at the correct seat, raise the material on your seat as the team emerges from the tunnel. The TIFO will be the most ambitious attempted in Scotland and your participation is crucial to its success. As ever, thank you for your continued support and cooperation. So that is from the Green Brigade. The obvious bit there that kind of intrigues me is the most ambitious attempted in Scotland bit. So um, I think the one at the start of the season will be very hard to beat. I just thought the design of it was brilliant. And um, I mean, it is like the full of Celtic Park 
um, taking part in a TIFO, so you could have like anything and it would look half decent. You could have Stevie in that daft East 17 white puffer jacket like four times in each stand and it would probably look all right. So um, I am intrigued by them saying that it's going to be the most ambitious. I wonder what they've got planned. Knowing their track record, I'm sure it will be excellent. Uh, yeah, it could be pretty special. Looking forward to it. John Kennedy is in contention for the Hearts managerial job. According to a few different outlets today, the Edinburgh Evening News are reporting that Stephen Naismith is still the main man that Hearts are concerned with. And if he manages to secure them third place and probably uh, guaranteed European group stage football next season, if we win the cup, then there's a fair chance that he would be offered the managerial job. However, if that doesn't happen and they look elsewhere, then Kennedy is said to be a name that interests them. We don't have too much other information on it, um, although it is claimed that Kennedy would like to be a manager in his own right. Uh, from memory in the past, he's been linked to Dundee United, he's been linked to Hearts' as rivals Hibs, uh, Meacheland as well, I seem to remember. Was it Meacheland last year? I think it was Meacheland, the, the Danish team. Uh, that we actually played last season. I think maybe at the tail end of last season or maybe even early this season, John Kennedy was linked with them. So he is someone that teams are aware of and someone who is highly rated. I think the big question for me that we won't know the answer to is how, where does John Kennedy see his future? Does he see it as one day being the, quote, main man at Celtic or... And, and how does he get there? Does he feel he has to leave the club and, and come back? Um, or is there a pathway for him there, perhaps after Ange leaves? And I'll be honest, I really don't know the answer to that at all. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Hearts and whether if they did approach Kennedy, whether he would be tempted. I mean, as much as we probably all don't have a, a great amount of time for Hearts, it's like probably the third biggest job in, in Scotland that, based on, you know, the last 20 odd years. Um, this isn't like a championship team, like taking a look at Kennedy, this would be a big job for him and a, a you know, team with a fair amount of money and, and decent ambitions for the future. So I think it would be interesting to see um, if they did approach him, what would happen there. But it's one that we'll only find out in the fullness of time. Right, Alistair Johnson was spotted in training today at Lennox Town. As talk of him making the Scottish Cup final grows. I get the feeling he is going to be fit to play in that match. Just from various things he said in interviews, I, I get the impression that he's kind of feeling quite good about his chances. I think the the thing kind of with, with any player that, that is injured for Celtic is that Ange wants him to be at like peak condition, and you may take that as a given, but playing for Ange, you will need to be absolutely perfect to go, especially, even more so, if you're a fullback like Johnson. So that would be the only thing, whether he is you know, perfect to go. I think there's maybe a chance he even gets some game time this coming Saturday against Aberdeen in a bid to have him fit for the following week. Anthony Rowson, I think, has been, you know, all right generally this season. In fact, he's probably had a good season. But um, for me, you know, Johnson's probably a, a level above and, and offers us more. And yeah, we are only playing lower league opposition, but I think it's, it's still a, a major, major game in Celtic's history coming up. Uh, a chance to, to win another treble. So I would want Alistair Johnson starting that game if that's possible. Ange did comment on it today. He did rule him out of the game tomorrow. As I say, I think he, he may well make an appearance this coming Saturday as well. Uh, Ange also ruled out CCV and Aaron Moy, which Aaron Moy seems to be a kind of weird one. He's missed a good few weeks now. Doesn't really seem to have been perfect for a couple of months now, Aaron Moy. Bit of a kind of sad end to the season for him. But he's still obviously, you know, um, offered us a lot, uh, especially in that kind of January to, to March period. Uh yeah, team for tomorrow. This is what I'm going for. And it is a tough one to, to weigh up. Will he go strong? Will he make changes? I'm making a few changes. Joe Hart uh, in goal, back four of Ralston, Starfelt, Kobayashi and Bernabe. I'd just like to see if, if Kobayashi and Bernabe 
have learned anything from that. Sure, Easter Road isn't quite Ibrox in terms of his hostility, but it's still going to be a tough match. I think they tend to come out and have a go. It was a bit like Hearts did as well. So has uh, Kobayashi learned anything? Bernabe the same. I'd like to see that tomorrow. Midfield uh, is an interesting one. No Callum McGregor there for me. I just think with it being, you know, three games this week, effectively, uh, you want to make some changes tomorrow. And I actually don't think McGregor's looked great over the last um, couple of matches. So I wouldn't be against, you know, putting Awata in that role. Hitati, hopefully get him a bit more game time. We're still waiting to see Hitati get back to those levels. Um, It'd be great if he could. And Ben Summers is an interesting one, I guess. I was looking around at, at youngsters and I would like to see at least one youngster start tomorrow. Is it likely to be Vata? I think he's had a couple of wee injury things. He wasn't even on the bench on Saturday. Summers was, so feels to me like he's the closest at the moment. And I'd like to see him in that midfield tomorrow night just to get a look at him. I think it's the perfect chance to to do it. Possibly the the final chance as well. I don't know if Ange would make big changes for Trophy Day and certainly not for the Scottish Cup final. And that front three again changes there. Players who all came on on Saturday, and I thought looked decent enough. Abada on the right, Haksabanovic on the left, and O through the middle. So, yeah, not totally sure what to expect tomorrow. I think it's going to be interesting, um, first of all, to see the team that Ange names and to see how those players who are uh, named in the starting lineup get on. Hopefully, we get a bit of a, a reaction from the weekend. Um, I sensed Andrew's in a particularly good mood today at the press conference, really kind of fought back against a few questions that seemed quite negative about the team. Um, There's one where he was asking, what what have you learned? And it was kind of negative connotations. And he said, well, recently I've learned that we're champions. We've won one trophy, uh, another trophy, and we have a chance to win a third in in 10 days or so. So I thought Andrew was really positive and hopefully that comes through in the performance tomorrow night. Uh, To watch the game, you either have to have a ticket or you'll have to have a, a pay-per-view pass. Obviously, those are the only two ways you can ever watch the game. There's no other method at all of being able to see the game tomorrow night. It's not on Sky Sports. Uh, Hibs are charging twelve ninety nine for their pay-per-view option, if that's the way uh, you want to go. You could always just ignore the game and watch me and Stevie post-match, because we are going to be doing the reaction. So, yeah, speak to you then.